Hello, welcome to another one of the Voyager Middle School uh, Steam Lab videos. This one is about coding. I'm going to do a scratch practice tutorial for my students. Um, it might find it useful to, this is how we're going to use conditional statements in Scratch. Uh, the practice that we're going to do is posted on Google Classroom for my students. It, we're going to use conditionals to make a throw and catch game. This is in preparation for our collection game, which this will not satisfy the requirements of. So the code is up there. If you click on these files, you'll have previews. My previews aren't working. You'll see the actual code. You'll see there are no comments in this code. As you're assembling the code, you need to be adding comments to the code. Um, the first one is the code for the player. The second one is the code for the ball. And then we have uh, a screenshot of the different sprites and backgrounds that I use as a default. And then there is a soccer variant as well with a little few extra things in terms of like being able to miss and have it bounce off the post or have some sort of sensing to know that the goal has been made. Um, we are going to build this using Scratch. Um, here is my Scratch window. The very first thing I need to do is I need to add a ball. You can choose whatever you like for the ball. I'm going to do a basketball theme. Um, the important thing for my students to, to learn in this uh, this tutorial is not how to pick a, the right backdrop or how to resize things or any of that. The important thing here is that you understand how conditionals work. So uh, if you don't get all of the little fine points right, that's fine. Um, you see the ball is bigger than the cat, so we're going to shrink it. So you can use the shrink button up here and click on it or you can actually script it. This is what I prefer. I prefer going into looks and setting the size to the size I would like. Let me make that a little bit bigger so you can see. Set the size to the size I would like. It's at 80% right now. It still looks too big for the cat, so let's try 40%. That's maybe a little small, so then I would try, I don't know, 60% split the difference. I like that size. This is going to be my first block of my setup. Remember that every sprite should have a setup where not only do I set what it looks like, but anything I change about it, like if I change its position, I imagine its position will change. I want to reset it to the starting point. So maybe I want that to be my starting point. I move it there and that will set the X and Y coordinates to where it is right now. You can check the X, Y coordinates right here. I'm going to put that in my setup. I'm going to change the direction in my setup, right? I can do all of the things in my setup, but as I add things, I'm going to add them to the setup. If I change a costume, I'm going to add it back to the setup. The setup happens right when the green flag is clicked. And I want that for each of my sprites. So if I want to go to this sprite, I want to set him up. Sorry, I didn't mean to gender the cat. Let's see. There we go. Do, 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 do. Label this as a setup. Remember to add comments. As soon as you know what your code is doing, you need to add a comment so that you can come back to it later. All right. So I also add comments when I set up a goal. So for example, what are my goals for this cat? My goal for this cat is that it can move with the arrow keys. The goal for the ball. Now, some people get confused because you're like, I want the cat to hold the ball, so I'm going to program the cat to hold the ball. No, actually, in, in order for the cat to look like the, whole, the it's holding the ball, the ball's got to move when the cat moves. So I want the cat to be able to hold the ball, right? And I also maybe want the cat to be able to shoot the ball. So those are my overall goals. I'm going, to type, I'm going to write them in here. As I get more specific, I can add that. And that way, when I build the code, I can actually attach that. This way, I can be planning out what I'm doing. So first things first, um, we're going to do, get the cat to hold the ball. So at this point, if you have, don't already have a cat and a ball, pause the video, get a cat and a ball, get a backdrop. Uh, at multiple points in the video, you should pause the video and get caught up. In order to make the cat move with the arrow keys, I'm going to use when the space key is pressed, because it's the only when the... Th Thing is pressed into events. So then I can use arrow keys. Let's make the right arrow make this guy move. And when I'm using the right arrow to make him move, I can type in here a different amount of movement. But now when I push the right arrow, which I'm pushing right now, he's not moving. That's because what when I push the right arrow and left arrow right now, what's actually moving is the cursor because I have it right in here. So if I click on the stage or if I click on the green flag to get things started, now the right arrow is making him move. If I push the left arrow, nothing happens yet. So to make the left arrow work, I'm going to duplicate, and I'm going to switch it to left arrow. And then I'm just going to keep testing. But what I'll notice is, no matter if I push right or left, he's moving to the right. 
So this one's obviously wrong. I don't have labels. You can see I'm not doing a very good job of commenting as I go. So if I'm trying to figure out where, where the problem is, I'm not looking at my comments because there are no comments. Um, this left arrow part is I want him to move left. So I'm going to label that. That's my goal here. On this one, I want him to move right. And it is basketball, so maybe I want at some point to have some code that's going to allow the cat to jump. So move left, move right, and jump. So left was not working, so you'll notice it's not working because all it does is move 10 steps. I want to make sure I'm going the right direction, so I find something that says direction, it says point in direction. Now you can see point in direction 90 doesn't make a lot of sense, but if I click this arrow, I can choose left. So now, if I push left over here, he goes left. But when I push right, he also just keeps going right or keeps going left. That's because I don't have that there, so I'll put that there. Now I can go left and right. So everything's perfect. And I usually would pause here and let my students catch up, and my students would say, but why is he upside down? And that's because uh, this sprite is set so that whichever direction the sprite points, the cat rotates. So there's different rotation styles in Scratch. This one's free rotate. This one is left or right. So what left or right does is it points the cat to the left or to the right depending on where the angle is if it's more left or if it's more right um, that's very useful for side scrolling games this one is don't rotate uh, this one can be useful too if you just never want the sprite to change based on its direction um, this one would be more for like a overhead view of a car or a tank uh, in an overhead view game so I like this one so if I made a change guess what that means I gotta put it in my setup look here's a block set rotation style left right so now I click the green flag, everything is set, now I can move. Okay. So that is basics of moving with arrow keys. You can see I don't have jump, but I'm going to switch over and we're going to make this ball work. So in the ball, you can see the cat is on top of the ball right now. To make the ball on top of the cat, you got to double click and click and drag and move it on top like that. And as long as I don't do that with a cat again, the ball will stay on top. Okay. Click green flag to get started. What I'm going to use right here is a conditional, and this is the, the bulk of why we're making this video. And after this part, I'm going to let you play on your own and figure things out. So, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to use a conditional. So here are my tips for how to use conditional statements in Scratch. And it works in other programming languages too. You need to write these in your notes if you're my students right now. Tips for conditionals. Alright, so tip number one is just like the tip, tips for loops. Don't use the conditional to start with. Start by testing the action. So you got to define the action. So what is the action that I want to happen here? And I got to test that part separately. Okay. So the action that I want in this case is I want the ball to go with the cat. That's what I want to achieve. So that's what I'm going to test out first. Okay. After I get, can have the ball go with the cat always, then I want that to only happen some of the time. So I need some condition. So I need to test the condition. So when I'm testing the condition, what that means is I want, when, when do I want the ball to go with the cat? When I want it to go with the cat, I want that part to be true. My condition should be true when that is the case. So when do I want it to be true? I want it to be true when the cat is touching. I don't want the cat to be able to grab the ball from across the, the court. I want it to only happen when the cat is touching the ball. I don't want the ball to stay with the cat if the cat is not touching it, right? So if the cat shoots the ball, if the cat um, if the cat is not oh, far away from the ball, I want this to be false. So cat is not touching the ball, right? Then once I've got those things together, I'm going to do the third step, which is to test the actual conditional. So I'm going to put it in the if statement and make sure that if the cat is touching the ball, the ball is staying with the cat. Sometimes on this one, the only real way, way to test it is to, to is to use a forever loop. Because do you want this to happen constantly? That means you need to have the forever loop. This forever, and then inside the forever loop you have the if statement. That is a very common form that we are going to use, and we're going to use it today too. So let's test this. The ball go with the cat. So I'm going to go to motion. I want to move the ball with the cat. And I'm looking down here, and maybe I can't figure this out, but if I have go to mouse pointer, let's just put that in a forever loop for a second and click it. And you can see it looks like I'm holding the ball on the mouse. But if I switch this mouse pointer to sprite1, which is the name of the cat, you can see that if I move the cat, 
the cat keeps the ball. Now it looks like the cat is eating the ball. We'll fix that in a second, but that's not essential. So this is definitely my action. I'm going to label it so I don't lose it. This is um, hold the ball. It's helping the cat hold the ball. You can see in the forever loop, it's a little bit intense because if I have it in the forever loop and I attach this all up like this, if I hit the green flag, it never leaves the cat. Even if I do my reset, it just jumps over to the cat. That's why I need the conditional. That's why I need if it's touching. I'm going to need this conditional. So this is going to go inside the if now that the action is working. But I want to test it out by first testing a condition. I want to do that when everything is stopped. So I'm going to hit stop here. Make sure the green flag is not running. There's no forever loops running in my code. I'm going to go to sensing because this is where I can find conditions. Conditions in Scratch have these pointy ends on them. That's what makes them true and false. So I want to say touching, right? I want to say, is he touching the ball? But if I click here, there's no ball. That's because I'm programming the ball. The ball, the ball can't be touching the ball. So the question is, should I be programming the ball? And we decided that the case, that was the case because I want the ball to move. So I want to, if I want to know if the cat is touching the ball, I need to know, is the ball touching the cat? So let's see. It should be false right now. I'm just clicking on it. It says false. It's false because the cat is not touching it. If I move the cat so the cat is touching the ball, it should say true. And it does. And if I move it so the cat is not touching the ball, just barely, it should say false. And if I move it so the cat is just barely touching the ball, it should say true. So I just test it a lot of different ways. That Now my condition is tested. It works. I'm going to assemble the whole thing and I'm going to see if this works. Right now, this should do exactly nothing because the cat's not touching the ball, so you shouldn't hold on to it. So... You can see it's doing nothing, but as I keep clicking it, and if I move, it, it's moving with the cat, if it is touching. But instead of me just clicking over and over again, that's why I put it in the forever loop. So now it's working. If I kick the green flag, it's not working. If I run this forever loop now, it's not working, not working, not working, and then he grabs it. So now I can grab and hold the ball. So that is how you use a condition. So far, that's great. So this is holding the ball, okay? Everything is working perfectly. If I want to fix the, the, the looks of this, i got to fix the costume. What's happening right now when I go to Sprite 1 is that the center of the basketball, which is right in the center, is going to the center of the cat, which is right in his mouth. If I want to make it look like it's going to his hand, I need to set the center of the cat to the hand. Now, if I do that, when I switch costumes, it doesn't quite work out. So I need to switch the center of the cat again. You gotta be a little bit careful about setting a weird center because it'll flip your cat around when he's turning around and things like that. But this is pretty close to the center and now it kind of looks like he's holding it. You can also cheat and use this to make it look like the basketball is dribbling by duplicating this costume and then setting the center of the second costume higher so that the ball looks like it goes down. And then I can just switch back and forth to make it look like he's dribbling. All right, so that is the whole of what I need you to understand. I need you to understand how to use the conditionals. I'm going to do a little bit more coding to make this into more of a game. But right now, I can get to the ball. I can hold the ball. And that is a start. We can use these skills for the next assignment. The next assignment is the conditional, uh, or sorry, the collection game. So if I post that up here on Google Classroom, you'll see that the collection game says how to do that. I'm going to pause real quick and I'll show you what a finished product looked like. Okay, I've added a little bit more. I haven't added scoring. Um, you can see that in the soccer variant. But if I click the green flag, everything gets set up. And now I've added a little bit of animation. And when I grab the ball, it's animated. And I've added shooting. And I've even added a little bit of imperfection to the shooting. I can make him a worse basketball player by changing the random number generator here to generate a little bit further apart numbers. So now when he shoots, it's a little bit more all over the place. Can't really predict where the shot is going to go because he's not very good at basketball. Sometimes it hits the basket, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope this is going to help you create some great scratch projects.